Is your team not performing well? Is morale low and turnover high? Are you falling further behind the competition? I'm here to help. I'm your host, Shaney, and this is The Leadership Show, where business strategy and culture finally meet, and we make the long-awaited shift from rhetoric to results. I promise I'm not your typical boring leadership consultant, and I will help you get your shift together. Let's do this. Hey, leader shifters, welcome. This is going to be a little bit of a different podcast than my normal, because yesterday marked two months since my mom passed away, and I actually want to take this opportunity to honor my mom a little bit on this podcast. And you might say, well, why are you going to talk about your mom and your mom's death on the leadership show? Well, I think there are a lot of good reasons, not the least of which is, like it or not, our parents really shape who we become as human beings and as leaders. And when my mom was sick and after she passed away, I spent a lot of time really thinking about and appreciating even more than I ever had the really positive influences that my mom had on me and who I developed into. And I just want to share some of those. Another reason I think this is really relevant is that shit happens to people, including leaders and sharing and being vulnerable about it, I think is really important. People are going to go through things. They need to feel comfortable communicating about it. And of course, one of the ways to create psychological safety on your team is to share when things happen in your life as well as the leader. Um, And I think the third thing is, you know, we get so busy at work and subsumed with our job responsibilities and our goals and our teams that sometimes we can take the people who matter most to us, matter most to us for granted. And a lot of times that means our families. And as we get older, it's more more important that we don't forget about our parents. My mom was 72 when she passed away on February 14th, as I said, just a couple of months ago. And she had gone into the hospital on January 28th, just thinking she had a little shortness of breath and some abdominal pain. And as many of you know who have been following me for a few months, it came as a total shock to her and to the rest of us that what was really going on was she had a really aggressive stage four small cell lung cancer and she passed away only 13 days after she was diagnosed. It was a whirlwind as you can well imagine. And frankly, I'm still processing a lot of my feelings about what happened and um, just, feelings about my relationship with my mom in general, which has always been good. In fact, it was amazing when I was a kid and we went through some ups and downs uh, when I was a young adult. And more recently it had gotten, uh, re- it, it, we'd really gotten back into a really great place and I'm extremely grateful for that. But what I thought I would do today was share some of the ways in which my mom, Carol, really helped shape and how she influenced me, in particular in the great ways. So before I get started, actually, I want to share a few pictures. And for those of you who are listening and not watching, I apologize. But if you are watching, this is my mom back when she was in her early 20s. Isn't she cute? It's like I look at this picture And I can't even believe my mom was ever that young. I mean, shit, it's been a long time since I've been this young. Kind of freaks me out a little bit. Um, And then this is a picture of me and my mom and my sister. And you probably can't see it, but this cake that my mom is holding says, Be My Valentine's Day. Um, And it was a cake that my dad had gotten for us, apparently, one Valentine's Day, and when my sister and I were cleaning out my mom's house after she passed away, and I was just digging through the photo albums, I love old family photos, 
and I found this picture and I was like, holy shit, one of the best pictures we've ever taken was the three of us on Valentine's Day, which is a little, I don't know, weird since she died on Valentine's Day. And here's a bit of a more recent picture. This was at, I think at her 60th birthday with me and my sister also. So anyway, just to give you a little sense of, of what my mom looked like, she and I shared some of the same physical characteristics in terms of our, our crinkly eyes when we smile and, and so forth. People could definitely tell I was her daughter. So what I wanted to go through was a list of why I think my mom was the best and not necessarily the best mom in the world, but the best for me and how she positively influenced me and best is an acronym. And of course also means I think she was great. So the, the B um, is, there's actually a couple words for each letter. B, the first one is bravery. My mom was very courageous starting at a young age. When she was growing up in New Jersey, she used to take the train into Philadelphia to dance live on American Bandstand with Dick Clark. And I always love hearing her stories about that. Thought it was super fun. My mom loved travel. And certainly that's uh, where I got my love of travel for. Um, and would often just make plans to travel alone or with, with other people that she didn't even know just because she loved to travel and I always thought that was super courageous. And another way that I think I really, really picked up on some of my mom's best traits was with tough love. She could be really direct, but in a way that was just super caring. And like to, she'd tell you things that maybe you didn't want to hear, but she knew were in your best interest to know. And that's something that I've kind of become known for, which is lovingly naming the elephant in the room and sort of mentioning some things that other people may be afraid to mention, but we gotta gotta work through them. The second B is for benevolence, as in generous. My mom was very generous with her time and energy. Um, can't say she was super, I mean, she was generous with money up until a point, but she was a, a teacher her whole career. So it's not like, you know, she had millions of dollars to just give away. She was extremely ben, uh, beneficent with her time for her students. She always did extracurricular things. She, she sponsored the yearbook, the debate team, and so forth, and really was always trying to develop her students in lots of interesting ways. And I've got, this is actually part of my eulogy, and there are a couple of things in here that I wanted to share. So this is a quote from a former student who wrote to us when they heard my mom had passed away and she was in touch with so many former students from the 70s and 80s and 90s years ago because of Facebook and social media. So this one, this student writes, the Duber, as she was known because her last name is Duberstein, the Duber was teaching something called journalism, which I decided was a sneaky alias for another English class. I had my suspicions, but still signed up for journalism. Carol, my mom, was energetic, passionate, direct, and well, bossy. And it was perfect. She was as much a big sister as she was a teacher. She called me out when I was slacking, and she had my back when things got tough. Her class was a safe place. We were expected to learn, but allowed to be teenagers. And we got so many stories like that about students who remember her as being brave and generous, like speaking up and, and trying to get the best out of her students. And, and that's a lot of times what I'm really trying to do for my coaching and consulting clients. So E, E is for educator, as she was a lifelong educator and a super smart lady. She taught English, Spanish, French, creative writing, journalism, and as I always like to say, most importantly, I believe 
she taught life skills to her students. Um, she also later in her career became an English as a second language coordinator, helping students who had come into the country not speaking any English, helping them to quickly get up to speed on the language and start to matriculate into regular classes. And again, the stories that some of her former students reached out and told us after she passed away were truly touching for us and amazing for us to hear. Because I think really at the end of the day, that's what most of us want is to leave an impact, to leave an imprint on the world. And, you know, my mom may not have been rich or famous, but God, did she leave an imprint on hundreds and hundreds of students over the many years that she taught. Let's see, the, oh, and, and, and what I think is so interesting about her being an educator is this. So she lived vicariously through me over many, many years. Um, and she would tell me, you know, when I was growing up, not a lot of women even went to college. And if they did and wanted to work, there are basically two things that it was okay for a woman in my generation to be, and that was a teacher or a nurse. My mom became a teacher and that was great because she spoke three languages and she was so amazing at it. Well, as I graduated from college and went to work on Wall Street and moved around and did a bunch of executive jobs, she just, it, 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 I know she could have done that if she had been born in a different generation and had been encouraged to go that route. And she just absolutely reveled in all of my successes and the experiences that I had. And I know it made her really proud. And I think something that I really took for granted until all this contemplation after she passed away was that I'm an educator in my own way, working with my coaching clients and teaching my leadership workshops. I'm, it's really, I'm just teaching. I'm teaching adults, I'm teaching business people. And again, we're all just human beings. And so I really now have started to identify myself as an educator like my mom, and I'm actually really proud of that. Um, So the, the next E is for entrepreneurial, because even though she worked a um, not well compensated career for most of her life, she um, wasn't afraid to take some risks and she saw a need in the marketplace for a, a, a business that could provide educational materials for teachers to supplement what was available in the classroom and for parents who were interested in having better resources to work with their kids outside of the classroom when they were at home. So she had the idea, she had the passion, she knew all the right products. She found a partner who had the money to invest and together they opened a store in West Palm Beach, Florida in the 80s called Teach. And Teach was like a triple entendre. It was the name of the store, it was also an acronym. And of course, you know, it was basically for teaching. And the store was open for, I don't know, five or six years. And I can't say it ever made a lot of money, but I've always respected her for taking the risk and for doing something she felt passionately about it and figuring out a way to make it happen by partnering with someone who did that have the financial wherewithal and, and to stick to it until it, you know, it didn't work out anymore. And it never, it never got her down or anything. I think she always loved the fact that she had had the opportunity to start a business. Okay, S, the S in best stands for, she was a strong woman. And you guys who know me know that I kind of pride myself on that. Being strong yet feminine, right? Strong women, a lot of times we feel like we have to act like men. And I say, that's bullshit. There's no reason that women can't continue to be feminine. And, and take advantage of some of the wonderful things that we have at our disposal just for the fact of being female. And we can be strong and, and, and show up in a way where we influence decisions and people and, um, and, and make a big impact. So um, in terms of of my mom being a strong woman, like she was just 
such a great role model for me. And, and I just kind of loved seeing her in action. And some, one of my good friends uh, said this about her um, after she passed away, that they saw how all the ways that my personality um, was, was shaped by, by my mom. And uh, he said that Carol was tough enough to handle whatever life sent her way, but soft enough to share herself with the good people around her that she's attracted. Um, and I thought that was a really nice compliment. The other S is her sense of humor. My mom was funny as shit. She could be really sarcastic and, and caustic at times, but my favorite part of her sense of humor was, was her irreverence, because that's you know one of my favorite parts of my sense of humor is being irreverent and not taking anything too seriously, being able to make fun of ourselves, be able to make fun of our circumstances, and, and just to like realize that none of this really matters. Like, let's have a sense of humor about everything. At least let's have some fun while we're working hard and, and, uh, and pushing through. So here, uh, I'm gonna share a couple of examples about this sense of humor and irreverence. So um, a, a story that, again, a student wrote us about was that mom was doing vocabulary drills. This was in one of her high school English classes. She was doing vocabulary drills with the students. And so she would say a word and the students would have to, you know, define what it was. And <laughs> there was one kid who was sort of dozing off during this vocabulary drill. And so my mom just couldn't let that be. And so she decided to jar him awake by saying, Joe, do you masticate? Because that was the word, masticate. And of course, you know, a 16 year old kid who has just been sort of awakened from a daydream by a teacher and asked if he masticates, which by the way means to chew, get your minds out of the gutter. He was, uh, he was extremely embarrassed. And of course the rest of the class thought it was so hysterical. Um, <laughs> and then another story I wanted to share was um, she was showing Gone with the Wind to a bunch of students. And, and one of them said that, um, you know, and my mom loved this movie. And honestly, this is also one of my, my favorite movies as well. And so they're talking about or, or they're watching a scene where Rhett comes home drunk and Scarlett is sitting at a big dining room table and she's sip, sipping brandy and they argue and Scarlett, you know, sort of storms off in the way that she does. And Rhett comes up behind her, sweeps her up and into his arms and carries her up the stairs. And then like, it's the end of scene. And then the next scene you see Scarlett sitting in bed and giggling like a child, like happy as she can be. And Mammy brings her in breakfast and my mom is laughing at this. And so this student like didn't really understand what was so funny about the scene. And so she said, you know, Mrs. D, why is this so funny? And my mom looked at her and says, don't you get what just happened? And this woman said, no, I don't. And my mom just says, Nella, they just had sex. So little, again, a little irreverent. And I think that was probably a ninth grade class. Um, and, and I guess that kind of goes also along with, uh, with bravery and educator. <laughs> Okay, so this brings us to the T in best, which there's, there's a couple things that, again, really influenced me. And I would say the first one is T for tribe. My mom was like all about her tribe, her friends, her family, her neighbors, her colleagues, her students, you name it. She had rela great relationships with everybody down to the pharmacist at Walgreens and the cashier at Publix. She moved into a new neighborhood and, you know, became like the grand madam of, of the neighborhood. Like all the neighbors would come to her for advice and they'd, 
you know, they'd walk her dogs if she was out of town and feed her cat and she would reciprocate. And, you know, the, the handyman in the neighborhood would always feel compelled to come help mom fix stuff in her house. And just like everybody knew Carol really well because she wasn't afraid to just create a tribe everywhere she went. And I'm a lot like that as well. I'm an extrovert and I have friends and former colleagues that I'm still in touch with from decades ago all around the world. In fact, whenever I travel anywhere for work or for pleasure, you can guarantee that I also know somebody there from my past that I try and connect with also when I'm traveling. And then that is the, the final T in best, which is travel. And I've sort of mentioned it before under bravery, but travel deserves its own category. I mean, I have had wanderlust since I, as long as I can remember, and I know that the seeds of that were planted from my mom. As a linguist who spoke French and Spanish, she always dreamed about traveling to Europe, especially Paris and other parts of France and Spain, and she started to take some of her students on trips to Latin America and Europe as she'd organized these, these educational travel trips. And so as for as long as I can remember, I always also fantasize about traveling. And at this point in my life, I've been to almost 50 countries and 46 or 47 states, and I'm not stopping anytime soon. Like I have this total thirst for learning about new cultures and new places and immersing myself in the culture that um, absolutely models my mom's. And we did some traveling together, in fact, that are some of my best memories of her. In 2001, we did an African safari in Kenya and Tanzania. Um, I'm doing these sort of out of order. When I graduated from high school, she had saved up enough money that she asked me you know, how I wanted to spend it. And I said, I wanna to go to Europe. So we spent a week in London and a week in France and, or a week in Paris. And we had such an amazing time. And since my mom retired about three years ago, that's pretty much all she was doing with her retirement savings was traveling, going on cruises, going back to Europe and having the time of her life. And I hadn't seen her that happy in so many years. And I'm grateful that she found a traveling buddy who could keep up with her that was willing to spend the money too, and go fun places and do fun things and give my mom those last few years of, of great travel memories before she passed away. Um, so that's best. B, brave and benevolent. E, educator and entrepreneurial. S, sense of humor and strong woman, tea, tribe, and travel. So those are among just some of the ways that I feel like the great woman who was my mother um, influenced me. And I want to encourage you guys who are listening and watching, don't take people who are important to you for granted. Like, and, and, I mean, I appreciated a lot of these things before she passed away, and I'm not sure I communicated to her as much as I could have how appreciative I was and what a big impact she had on me, and that makes me sad. So I'm just going to wrap up with um, her last Facebook post. Um, was January 27th, two days before she went into the ER and then never left the hospital. And it was actually a meme. And I don't even think my mom knew what a meme was. One thing she wasn't was technologically savvy. Um, but it was a, you know, sort of a nice, pretty picture. And on it, it said, it's hard when you miss people. But you know, if you miss them, it means you were lucky. It means you had someone special in your life, someone worth missing. So my mom, who died only two weeks ago at 72 years young, is someone definitely worth missing. And that's why I wanted to do a podcast dedicated to her life and to the impact she had on so many people, including me and my sister Nancy and all of her students and everyone in her tribe. We love you and we miss you. 
And I hope all of you leader shifters who have watched or listened take the initiative, excuse me, <clears throat> to call up people that you love and mean a lot to you and just let them know how important they are to you. So thanks for watching. And I will be back soon with a more traditional leadership show podcast.